Hey there, this is Alexis Santos with Engadget, and we're here with uh, four University of Pennsylvania students who are working on the Titan Arm. Uh, Nick Parada, Elizabeth Beatty, uh, Nico Vladimirov, and Nick McGill. So, Nico, can you give us a tour of the Titan Arm? Sure thing. Um, so the Titan Arm is a powered upper body exoskeleton for use in assisted mobility and also assisted lifting scenarios, as well as some physical therapy applications. So for jobs such as warehouse workers or other, other scenarios where people need to lift a lot of weight, um, there are back injuries that are extremely prevalent, so we wanted to prevent that. And also to really assist in people lifting, uh, lifting lots of weight. Uh, another application of this device is also for physical therapy and also regaining lost mobility. So. Uh, somebody who has gone through an elbow injury, which is also quite common in, in, in sports and athletics, uh, this can really help to regain that loss of mobility while the person is in physical therapy. Uh, there is also, we have a very intricate shoulder linkage that uh, can keep track of the mobility of a person's shoulder. So somebody who's going through a shoulder injury, a uh, doctor can log in remotely and check their progress every day to see uh, basically how far they're progressing with all of their movements. That they're to so how did you build this thing? Nick, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, this entire suit was manufactured in-house by us at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, all the metal components, there's actually 38 of them in all, they were manufactured using uh, computer numerically controlled machines. Um, Nico and I uh, spearheaded that. We spent over 300 hours working on that on manufacturing. Um, and uh, then we also salvaged a number of components. Um, uh, first and foremost, the anchor of everything is our back plate that actually comes from uh, scuba diving. Um, from the, and then from there, the straps come from that of a uh, military grade hiking backpack. And um, that gives it the rigidity um, that we need in user attachment in order to lift these things. So, about how much did this thing set you back? Yeah, so um, actually, we set up to make a low cost solution. A lot of the exoskeletons that are available. Um, for the general public, at least in physical therapy, are very expensive, upwards of $100,000. Um, so we were looking to implement a low-cost solution, make it more accessible for an everyday user. Um, so it's about uh, just short of $2,000, um, all the components you see here. And this was done as a senior project? Yep, uh, we spent about eight months now um, working on this project and uh, at the University of Pennsylvania in the mechanical engineering department. Uh, so uh, we're happy with the results that we've met all of our, our specs. We've, we've got an 18 pound suit that cost uh, under $2,000 that has, uh, I guess, a very high usage to charge time ratio. Uh, we were using it for over 24 hours without charging the batteries uh, during our senior design competition, actually. Um, and yeah, we're really happy with the results. So notice you've got a, a joystick thing down there. Yes, we do. So uh, what does that do for the whole system? So this joystick is actually what drives the control of the actuated elbow joint and gives us the bicep curl and also the tricep extension motion that we want to perform. Uh, the reason we chose a joystick is actually a competing system such as the exo exobionic system, uh, which is a lower body exoskeleton, also uses a joystick controller. Uh, so we didn't think it was too far off. For future implementation, we would want to look into something uh, like EMG, electromyography sensors, that can track how much muscle activity is going on. And basically, then it would automatically uh, pick up on your motion and follow you there. Uh, there's also a switch here. You can see this little light comes on when you flick the switch. Uh, this drives the braking system in the back, so I can turn around and show you that. Uh, Nick, you want to go a little bit? Into that? Sure, yeah. The braking system is necessary uh, because of our choice of actuator. We're using a large DC motor here uh, that supplies the power. Uh, it's great, it's got a great power to weight ratio, um, it's fairly inexpensive for what we needed. The only problem is it can't hold a static load. Um, so, in order to do that, we have implemented this ratchet and pawl mechanism, which engages a basically unidirectional locking that the user can lift, engage the brakes, and hold it there just about all day. All right, so you've got a beagle bone on this thing? Yeah, yeah, so we've got a beagle bone microcontroller doing all the heavy lifting. Uh, so that runs the main control loop. It takes input from the joystick we just went over. Uh, it actually talks with an uh, M2 microcontroller. Uh, this is an Atmega32 base uh, microcontroller that does the, it's a buffer between our $90 beagle bone and our uh, $700 motor right here that's a high power, high voltage motor. So this handles a five volt logic system going to our motor driver board on the left right here. Um, and uh, that controls the pulse width modulation. And then it also sends data wirelessly to our Intel DE2I board that we're here. We have here, and uh, 
so this is something that we'd use for, say, physical therapy. It'd be a base station. Uh, so using uh, wireless transfer, uh, we send packets over uh, UDP to MATLAB. And so with that, we can take those packets in, process them, and then log them and plot them in real time. All right. So last question here, guys. Um, what's the next step for this thing? Well, we're all going to grad school next year at the University of Pennsylvania, so we've got a little bit more time together, and uh, we've been looking into our future applications, future improvements, so... Yeah, so um, we'd really like to make a second arm. So this was an eight-month eight month long project, um, proof of concept to do a single arm, single power joint, and since we did all of the manufacturing in-house, it would be relatively easy to... Uh, integrate a second arm onto the suit. Um, we'd also really like to implement actuation at the structural shoulder joints. Right now they're just passive joints um, that can track range of motion data, but we'd really like to get some localized actuation on there to help in scenarios such as occupational lifting. And in addition, we mentioned the EMG sensing to take the place of the remote control. Um, so this can definitely gain the benefit that the user can control the system without having to hold anything, um, and the EMG muscle signals can, can basically be used to control the, the position and velocity to see. Well, thanks for showing us the Titan Arm, guys, and uh, congratulations on your impending graduation. Thank you.